Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 25 of Nindies and Indies, a Nintendo fan podcast. I'm your host, Scrap Gear. Joining me, as always, my good buddy, Draco Augustus. How's it going, man? hey oh, It's going good. Yeah. Going, going pretty good. Yeah. Uh, well, let's get right into this. What have you been up to the past couple of weeks? Uh, I actually... I've played Fortnite. That's about it. Oh, no. Fortnite, Pokemon Go, because there's a new generation out, and... Uh, they have like a, a Halloween event as usual, mm-hmm. and I'm still working on. They have another special Pokemon that you can get through that too, uh, Spiritomb or whatever. Ah, uh, yes, uh, yeah, that's what it's called. And um, and then uh, I just got my Celebi, which is what I've there been working go. on that for a little while, a long time. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, and then I've been playing Animal Crossing, which now now they're out of the Halloween fishing tournament, which I got a gold trophy in. There you go. And I'm working on now. It's all uh, the one year anniversary stuff. So right now, every day you log in, you get like ten leaf tickets. If if you play that at all, mm-hmm. uh, that's that's like the paid currency, you know, that yeah. you have to pay for usually. Which you can still earn several of them in game, like not to get a whole bunch of stuff done with it but you know if you you can get enough to like get the golden fishing rod in the next fishing tournament (laughs) yeah (laughs) which lets you catch two fish at a time Ooh. Uh, yeah yeah but uh but yeah uh working on i'd say working on that just making my campsite look cool i'm working on getting the ghost tent just because that sounds cool Mm -hmm. um but the biggest thing we've been doing is playing Fort Nightmares, which there's been a lot of people complaining about. Okay. They're like, why? They're, you know, people just like, if I want to play zombies, I'd go play H1Z1 or some some other, you know, game with zombies in it. Yeah. But I think it's pretty fun. It's a pretty good little twist they put into the game. Basically, these, as you're playing, these uh, cube fragments start appearing everywhere around the map right Mm -hmm. uh and as it keeps going more keeps spawning in and uh you have challenges like destroy this type of cube monster or uh destroy a cube fragment or um do damage to cube monsters with this type of gun it all sorts of different challenges Mm -hmm. um and uh you know visit certain areas and stuff like that similar challenges with other ones but you get specific loot like um I have a glider now that's a ghost train, which is awesome because it like it kind of reminds the way that the it opens up and then the wheels pop out. It reminds me of the end of Back to the Future Three, whenever nice. the train takes off, you know, mm-hmm. um, and it's like spinning with like you know spectral gases and stuff, and and uh, it, it's a ghost train, right? And it and when it opens up, it goes like woo, mm-hmm. you know, the train goes. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. And then with the zombies or the cube creatures, cube monsters, whatever they call them, um, by the time you get to the end of the game, it can get freaking nuts. Like you're constantly running, like you end up third partying people who are just like, just trying to survive, not get killed by the cube monsters, right? Like they'll be trying to build up just to use some, just to use a shield or something and, and you can shoot them because they're they can't pay attention to anything except surviving the zombies yeah and then of course you go to shoot them and then you have zombies coming up behind you of course like jumping around and trying to build and you know it's it's adds a whole another difficulty level which which i thought it was pretty fun uh at first now i'm kind of ready to go back to normal which i do feel like they've kind of like slowed them down some now that they're not appearing as much it seems like Mm -hmm. um but uh, it could just be the game, like you know how the game ends, like in what area, just depending on, yeah, on the uh, the area and how dense the zombie population is mm-hmm. in those areas. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been pretty cool, and they added a crossbow, which does extra damage to the cube monsters, and it's it's only got seven seven shots mm-hmm. uh, per magazine, but you have infinite ammo, which is very handy, especially when you have tons of cube creatures coming yeah. at you. Um, and then uh, they also came out with a six shooter, 
which they took the revolver out a while back because nobody was using it. And I'm not sure how widely used a six shooter is. I've gotten a couple eliminations with it, but uh, I'm not, I haven't really found a good, uh, I'd always pick up like, you know, a purple assault rifle over a revolver. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's, it's just, it's not the, the meta, right? Yeah. Um, My favorite word. uh, (laughs) Not mine at least. And, um, (laughs) And yeah, it, it's fun though, because you, you aim and it's more accurate. You, you know, you aim down something that's more accurate, but you can like fan it. You can hip fire and shoot fast. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course it's only six rounds. It uses assault rifle ammo though. So that's what I was talking about. I'll pick that up instead. I'd pick up a purple or gold assault rifle. Easy. Maybe even a blue assault rifle, uh, a rifle over a blue, uh, six shooter. Anyways, I think that's it. Uh, course there's uh, um cubes you can pick up and turn into ghosts but that's been out since the beginning of the season um but yeah i think that's it um hmm what have you been playing man uh well as far as for me like i haven't been playing a ton um this past week especially like i've just been kind of getting caught up on doing some of my some of my comic book reading and i'm really looking forward to uh i think it starts it's either this week or next week but there is a um or maybe it's the end of the month in any case at some point uh for anyone who knows me knows i am a huge x-men fan um and the x-men comics are going back to their roots and going back to the uncanny x-men title uh at the end of the month and we were just talking about it before recording uh our our buddy thaddeus prime posted in the mulehorn gaming uh discord in the comics and collectibles section that apparently for issue number one of uncanny x-men there's going to be 30 different variant covers and i'm like oh well it's probably only going to be a handful and like this is you know one of my favorite things so maybe i'll pick up a couple of them they're all good like there's a couple of them that like there's one that's just a blank white cover which to anybody who's just going into a comic store and just like, oh, you know, I kind of want to pick up comics. We'll see that and be like, oh, that's not that great. But uh, I have floating around somewhere. Uh, I have a variant, one of the a variant cover like that for one of the Thor God of Thunder comics or one of the issues. I don't remember exactly which one, but the artist was at the convention when I picked that up and he custom watercolor painted uh, a custom cover just for me. Uh, because I was there. So like those ones, people look at them and go, Oh, those are kind of, eh, but, yeah, but those are like convention like land. Those are like convention gold mines. Cause it's like, I have a variant cover that is mine and mine alone. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I know. And I know Thaddeus has been picking up some, like, like when we were at comic Palooza, he picked up a few original art pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been pretty into collecting. Yeah. Uh, all those kind of things lately that Mm -hmm. i've noticed and it's awesome yeah um but yeah other than that um i've been like just kind of getting caught up on critical role and then i found out uh, one of the things that i read this past week is there is a D &D campaign podcast run uh played by its three brothers and their dad uh called the adventure zone and mm-hmm. their podcast is being transcribed into a graphic novel. So I picked up the first volume of that and I read through that and that was super fun. Uh, so I started listening to their show. Um, but other than that, like really the only games that I've been playing, I've been playing a little bit of a um, uh, little bit of Octopath Traveler. Still, I, I don't know what it is about Octopath Traveler versus Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But Xenoblade Chronicles 2, like, I couldn't put that down, and I put so much time into it. I mm-hmm. Right now, because all of the character stories are uh, separate, and, like, when you're doing a particular character story, it kind of chime. Some of the other characters that are in the party will chime in at random points, but it's not mm-hmm. really a scripted scene in the sense of like, Hey, here's a quick cut scene with some stuff that, you know, here's the characters interacting. So it feels like a much more disconnected experience, at least at the beginning of the game. My understanding is like, once you complete every character's first four chapters, it just becomes one story. And that's when they all finally get together. 
Um, oh, okay. But again, like it just it hasn't held my attention as much as Xenoblade did. Starlink, however, uh, mm. I have been playing a ton of that. Um, I, I haven't played that much this past week, but I played a ton of it leading up to this past weekend, and I now own everything. <laughs> Oh, Ex- man. Except oh. except for the except for the ships and stuff that come with the uh, Xbox One and PS4 starter kits. Those oh, are yeah. The- yeah. So I'm missing one ship and one gun. That's it. But I have it digitally because the Switch version comes with it digitally. Came with it. Yeah. Um, that's that's awesome. <clears throat> but yeah, I probably won't get everything. But I'm jealous that you got everything. Mm-hmm. The kids want it for Christmas, though. That's yeah. probably going to be one of the one of their big presents, and that's probably when I'll get to play it because I'm not going to get my own copy. <laughs> <laughs> if we're planning on getting that for them, yeah. uh, but I mean, I will really, definitely... really, the best deal if you want to play it with the whole experience is I think there's like a digital deluxe edition for like maybe eighty bucks. Yeah, I saw that. That that pretty, comes pretty... with everything. Yeah, the Switch version comes with everything. And really, the only the only physical stuff that I want would be the R wing. The yeah. um, so, but yeah, I probably still wouldn't be able to get away with with getting both the full digital deluxe edition and also a physical copy. But maybe the digital edition could be mine, and then the kids could have the physical. <laughs> there you go. Uh, my uh, my wife's right behind me and she's like "Mm." (laughs) um but yeah so there there was a buddy of mine who he was thinking about getting it but he ended up picking up red dead redemption 2 uh which you know that's fine he enjoys he enjoys that game so i did get to play that game some yeah it's pretty cool i found a really funny bug Excellent. Um, I was playing on a friend's xbox um but yeah it, it was funny we went into to we were like saving one of our friends who she's a she's a lady of the night right okay. and uh and he started getting rough with her right and uh so we stepped in to intervene uh-huh. and i started trying to hit the guy and he was like a freaking ninja just blocking everything right and then he went to choke me uh-huh. and all of a sudden like his arms went through me and his arms were behind him and choking me and like there's just this weird like <laughs> amoeba going on and it it, it wouldn't stop uh, like it just it like <laughs> got stuck on that and you just see you just see my face like uh, arthur the main character's face just going like uh, uh, like he's actually uh, being choked uh, out but literally it's like this guy trying to apply pressure with his elbows basically at this point yeah well like and like it was this weird like like the arms are going through the body just it was like uh <laughs> and we'd only been playing the game for like <laughs> 30 minutes maybe you know and it, it that started happening and i just started laughing like, oh man it's a pretty cool game like there's yeah. it's pretty neat but like it's it's kind of clunky too like the controls are just kind of wonky and like when you go to aim you end up accidentally shooting somebody in the back and everybody tries to kill you after that well, and of course you get a bounty on your head and i'm just kind of like geez like it's really easy to mess up in this game and then uh, and I then mean... there you have like consequences for it you know yeah <laughs> so it's like i was just kind of like i probably won't get this but it's pretty neat like the 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 level of of stuff you can do you know just the all the all the different things you know i mean like you can go hunt and go i mean which i think everybody knows i'm not gonna like review the game right now but yeah it's pretty cool but i just it, yeah i fortnite's way smoother <laughs> Well, it's a completely different type of game, too. So. Yeah, I know. I'm just joking. <laughs> there were rumors, though, that it was going to have Battle Royale, and I just, I can't. Uh, it, which would be kind of neat, but I just, uh, no. No. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I've been playing through that. Uh, I've gotten three of, no, four of the pilots to... It's not really max level because the way that the characters and the pilots and everything level up is every time you master a weapon or a ship or you increase the level of a weapon or a ship, um, you get Mm -hmm. one skill point. Um, And I think I I did the math. And if you have every single ship, every single weapon, 
max out. I think like the max level is like 80 something. Mm-hmm. Um, but level 32 is when a character will max out at, uh, for skill points. And mm. well, I say max out in the f- sense that like you can, I have a character that's like level 34 or 35 right now and she has three extra skill points. Um, but uh, her skill tree, like as far as like what you can put the skill points into, maxes out at 32. Um, <clears throat> so I've got four characters maxed out now. Um, and now I'm working on some of the new characters that I just got. Uh, but I'm, I'm still like maybe I, I'm, I'm nearing the end of the main story. Uh, I still haven't gone to go and finish Fox's story, which I think is only like four missions long. There's one mm. mission where it's like, you go here, you scan this stuff. And it's like, okay, what do we do next? Okay, we got to go to this pirate base. You go to this pirate base, you clear that out. You go through, you find out a bit more information. It's like, ah, oh, this is leading us to this planet over here. You go here, you show up at one location, you do another fight with some more pirates because it was a trap that Wolf set. And then you leave... And then it's like, okay, we're headed towards the final fight with Wolf. And I'm like, okay, that's super short. <laughs> but, like, the first one takes place on a planet that's, like, level three. Uh, the space pirate one is, like, level four. The uh, the next planet is, like, a level nine or ten planet. And then the last one is, like, a level 15 to 20 planet okay. so like they, there's definitely like they want you to go out and do some other stuff before you just like oh i'm just gonna plow through fox's missions yeah 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 get you to level up and do other stuff mm-hmm. that's good yeah yeah i mean you can't expect it to be like complete a complete separate game for fox even though you can be him the whole time yeah, um, and right, I mean, and I wasn't expecting like oh like this story is gonna have like x number of missions and then fox is gonna have like maybe a third of that and which i mean it almost kind of is that um but at the same time like i was like only four missions for fox i mean eh, it's an exclusive thing and uh so a buddy of mine has starlink on his ps4 i brought over my r wing and fox and we tried hooking it up and playing it wouldn't read mm-hmm. it which is a bummer yeah, yeah i mean we expected that but it was like maybe just maybe and no how cool would that be no <laughs> yeah because then he would be like me and just like man i guess i gotta go out and buy the starter kit for the switch for him it'd be for the switch for me it'd be for i'd probably buy it on the xbox because yeah 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 um but yeah i've still been having a lot of fun with starlink uh i haven't like i said this past week i haven't played a whole lot but i've been getting caught up on other stuff so yeah yeah um, but yeah, that's all that I've been playing. Uh, so we're going to move on to our main topic now, uh, which for anyone, this shouldn't be that much of a surprise. We're going to talk about the Nintendo direct the or the smash brothers ultimate Nintendo direct that happened yesterday as well as yes. we're recording this. It's yesterday. Um, <clears throat> so getting right into that, uh, they show the first thing they start off with is like, okay, we've shown you the 72 fighters real quick, real quick, real quick. Okay. Is there anything else you feel like you need to know about this game before you buy it? <laughs> I mean, I saw the the teaser trailer and it's like, well, I know where my money is going whenever this comes out. Yeah. So I, I've always enjoyed the Smash games. Um, <clears throat> I didn't play the Wii U or the 3DS version as much as I did like Melee or Brawl just because mm-hmm. Melee, I had some friends in the area and we would just you know, dick around and do like a 72 person tournament or whatever the highest number was, uh, and see who could make it all the way to the end. Uh, Mm Um, but with brawl, there was the subspace emissary story stuff. So, um, and the Wii U version just did not have that. I, I played a lot of the all-star mode way more than I did on any of the other ones, but that's because like, for me, that was the most fun. Cause I'm not a, I'm not an online competitive smash player. That's just, mm-hmm. that's just not me. I'm not that good. Um, but, you know. Eh. Yeah, I mostly played 64 and Melee. Um, just because that was whenever I was, like, at my parents' 
friends would come over and we'd get competitive with each other, you know, and, yeah. and, and all that. But, uh, then with brawl, uh, I went through the subspace emissary is, is all I did pretty much. I mean, cause, uh, my, we actually got that when we got the Wii and my wife and I were together then, and we played through that together. So mm-hmm. that was fun. Yeah. And now that's what the kids are learning recovery and movement on right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what uh yeah. And I you know, I never had a Wii U and I'm not super interested in playing it on a DS, so Yeah. It's uh it's interesting. <laughs> I did play um I can't remember if I told you about about this yet, but um I played uh I got I got a copy of uh, whatchamacallit, that that Smash clone that people brawl out okay uh on the xbox one i got Mm -hmm. it through the terminals website and uh that's that's a pretty fun game like it it, it's pretty quick and smooth it's it's not the exact same um as smash but uh it's it's fun Mm -hmm. uh anyways back on topic (laughs) (laughs) all right so going through the big highlights for the smash direct i mean it was a it was a 40 minute long direct uh and a lot of it was more of just like hey here's some of the cool things that you can do um but the first thing they talked about was like okay we've shown you 72 fighters here are the last here are the final characters that will be available at launch and they showed off ken which i mean everyone knew ken was coming uh Mm -hmm. especially when they're like oh we have echo fighters in this one and yeah, it's like if Ken right. doesn't make an appearance, that's just a, that's a missed opportunity. Yeah. Um, they although, like he is an echo of Ryu in the sense that his moves are the same, but they added a bit. Uh, uh, what was it in in some of the later Smash, uh, not Smash, Street Fighter games? Uh, like Ken and Ryu still had the same move set, but like uh ken's shoryuken was a little more powerful than ryu's whereas ryu's hadoken was a little more powerful Mm -hmm. um and like they changed some of the visuals on it so like when ken uses the hadoken in smash ultimate it has the super street fighter 2 uh animation where it has like the fists or the hands inside of the hadoken fireball as it goes across Mm -hmm. um and like a lot of his instead of being like punches his uh his regular attacks are more kicks because that's what he's better at is kicking. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it's, it's slightly, it, it's kind of like how I look at the differences between Marth and Lucina. Marth is a little bit stronger, but Lucina's a little bit faster kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just enough of a difference to be like, Ken is his own character. He plays a lot like Ryu, but you know, uh, and then they also introduced, Incineroar, the final yeah. form of the fire starter from Pokemon Sun and Moon, which I remember Lit. when Sun and Moon was announced, a friend of mine and I, like uh, when I was working at the, the record store that I worked at, we were both big into Pokemon, and she was like, oh, you know, who are you going to start with? It's like, well, I really, really, really want to start with the fire starter, because fire has always been my favorite. But ever mm-hmm. since Cyndaquil, not Cyndaquil, not Cyndaquil. Nope. Torchic. There we go. Uh, in the Ruby and Sapphire games, like every single fire starter has gone fire, fire to fire fighting. The final form mm-hmm. has been firefighting forever, and it's driven me nuts. Everybody <laughs> else has gotten something different. Like in uh, in the Ruby and Sapphire, the grass type just stays grass the whole time, and then the water one is water ground throughout most of it. Um... And then, like, after that, the grass was, like, grass ground, and then the water one went to water steel, uh, and, like, so on and so forth. And then, uh, and... I know that... Oh, no, uh, that, I forgot, I forgot, in X and Y, Fennekin went to Fire Psychic, which was different. It was still, like, sure, why not, I guess. Uh, but then when I saw the picture, the, the concept art for the final form of the fire type starter, I was like, no, he, no, really? They're going to do firefighting again. No, he's fire dark, <laughs> but he looks like a wrestler. He's, he's might as well be a firefighting. Um, yeah. oh, it's but, not firefighting. I don't know. I, I think it's, it I think it's fire dark. I don't know. I didn't play that much sun and moon. Um, 
but yeah, Elliot was... has, doesn't. Have, he kind of he he got Moon and was into it for a little while, but he kind of got. He I know his Litten evolved into whatever the next one is, but he hasn't gotten it all the way up to Incineroar yet. Yeah, but uh, I am gonna he, check yeah. out. Um, yeah, no, it is it is Fire Dark, it is Fire okay. Dark. Um, actually, I'm gonna go on the Bulbapedia because that one's gonna be a little. But even in the direct, they said that like most of his moves are based on like pro wrestling moves and stuff. So. Yeah, but yeah, Litten goes into Torah Cat, which is it's fire and then fire and then Incineroar. Like he looks like a wrestler. A lot of yeah, his moves yeah. in Smash Ultimate, they said, are like they're going to be based off of wrestling moves. But his typing yeah. is actually fire dark. So they're like, we don't want people to be mad at us for making another fire fighting. So we're going to make him yeah. dark, but he's going to look like a fighting Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And in Smash, they're going to pretty much make him a fighting a fighting type Pokemon. Yeah, I, I mean, which which works out fine because it is a fighting game. So, yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah, I think I, I actually think his moveset is all pretty cool. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I think he'll be fun to try out. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, continuing with the characters, um, they did announce that they were going to let they announced the final characters that were going to be available for smash at release. And they wanted to make sure that they were very specific about that. It was like at release. Cause then later on in the direct, they announced that they, they are working on new characters to add in. They already have all five. Uh, I think there's going to be five of them is what they have set up. Yeah. At least right it's now, it's going to be five, five sets that are going to be five ninety nine each. Yep. Which consists of a character, a uh, map or a stage a stage yep. and a few music yeah pieces and usually what what they'll do is for like i think when cloud was released there was cloud there was the midgar stage and then there was um like two two final fantasy 7 remix tracks that were added for background music uh specifically for when you're at midgard uh mm-hmm. and whatnot so we can expect that whatever the five new characters are, it's going to be the new character, a stage that is relevant to that character, and then some music from uh, the game that that character's from. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have no idea what they are. They they were very specific on being like, we don't want to spoil any of it. Um, at the They've very... already spoiled everything else in the game. <laughs> I mean, yeah, might as well. Uh, <clears throat> but... Uh, they did, there was a small text at the bottom of the screen when I was watching it that said, like, these DLC packs are set to come out, um, s- like, starting, like, from release, or estimated to come out, like, from release all the way through to, like, February of 2020. Mm-hmm. So, and, uh, he even said during the direct, um, that, uh, da, 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 that, they were they were estimating it would come out spaced out over the course of a year, so January twenty nineteen isn't a bad uh, no February twenty nineteen isn't a bad benchmark to be like yeah it should all be out by this point because that's a little over a year. Yeah, or February twenty twenty. Yeah, February twenty twenty. Did I say twenty nineteen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I meant twenty twenty. <laughs> so yeah, I mean yeah, February twenty twenty. Good... That's still a little over. That's a, it's that's just a year. It, yeah, I was like, it comes out in December, so I mean, that's only two months away, and and the we won't see the first one until at least two months after yeah launch. So yeah, it's about a year from the first one. Yeah. I get. I, anyways, it's perfectly reasonable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they also announced uh, as a little uh, tidbit, it's like, hey, an appreciation for everybody who goes out and picks up our game. And uh, you register your copy of the game before January 31st of 2019. Um, Which, I mean, if you buy it digitally, it's automatically registered. But if you have your Nintendo account, uh, you have to go and you get the physical version. You have to go and just redeem your gold points for buying the physical version. Before January 31st, 2019, you get Piranha Plant as a character as a free update. At some point, whenever he comes out. (laughs) That's kind of crazy that that you get a whole extra fighter for doing for doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if there'll be any chance for anyone that gets it later on to get them. I'm sure he won't I, be like the strongest fighter or anything. Well, but still, you know, I mean that. I think what it is is like they're rewarding the 
they're they're doing the easiest thing I can think of for um as kind of an example for this is back when the 3DS originally launched, it was a really expensive handheld. Mm -hmm. Um, and eventually like within the first six months or something, they brought the price down significantly. Uh, and anybody who had a 3DS before that price cut, um, Mm -hmm. got a special notice from Nintendo called the ambassadors program. Uh, so they rewarded the people who had a 3DS before um, before that cutoff. Uh, they have a bunch of virtual console games that are not available on the 3DS. Um, like, there's a bunch of Game Boy Advance ones. Um, there's a couple of uh, Game Boy Color games that aren't available through the... Uh, through the eShop, that the only way to have those games on your 3DS is if you had a 3DS before that price cut, um, mm. which I I missed because I just didn't have the money. And then when the price dropped, I was like, oh, good, I can finally get it. And then my buddy who had gotten one at launch was like, look at all these awesome games I have that you don't because you waited. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is kind of their way of being like, hey, as appreciation for all those people who went and picked up our game early you know within the first two months uh you know here's a special character i'm sure they're gonna make it so that uh uh, the piranha plant is available he might cost two three four dollars maybe not four dollars but um you know it will be a little bit cheaper than getting like the whole like whatever the character packs are uh for the other five dlc characters Mm-hmm. But again, I can't imagine it's going to be too expensive. But if you don't register it before January thirty first, I'm sure he'll still they be said available. It, he was going to be free. the The Piranha Plant was going to be free only if you register before January thirty first. Oh, okay. I see. What, yeah, I see. What yes. You're that. Yeah. yeah. I, another thing with that is, I'm wondering if like so, we'll probably just have one physical copy. Mm-hmm. I'd like to get a digital copy for myself also. But we'll just see how it is when that time comes. Um, but uh, if we just have that physical copy, I'll obviously get the Piranha Plant because mm-hmm. I'll register it on mine. But I guess my son won't right. because when he plays on his on his mm-hmm. Switch or either of them. Yeah. But again, like I said, I'm sure at some point, like, because they they also said that like, yeah, if you register, you'll get him for free. Whenever he gets released. Yeah. So, um, so whenever he gets released, the people who registered will get it for free. Um, and the people who haven't registered it or don't have a copy to register, uh, will just, uh, it'll be some kind of cost. I can't imagine it's going to be too much. If like a, a character, a stage and music is $6. I can't imagine the character is going to be super expensive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it would be reasonable. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, just something to talk about. Yep. <laughs> um. Oh, also, before we move on, uh, we mentioned that there's the five character packs for five ninety nine. They did also mention there's going to be a fighter pass, which will be yes. uh, $25, so it'll be twenty four ninety nine. Yeah. Um, and that includes all of them. They, they wanted to give people the opportunity to be like, Hey, do you think you're going to get all the fighters? Uh, here's a little bit of a discount for you. Uh, cause instead of being $30 for all five, it's 25. So you save, you, you basically get, you buy four and you get one for a dollar is basically mm-hmm. what the fighter pass, which that's what I'm going to do because I know I'm going to get all the characters anyways. Um, yeah. so, uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited to, to be able to play with some of the characters, especially some of the new ones. Yeah, um, for sure. I want, um, I want to try out Simon Belmont. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, that's the one I'm most excited about probably. All right. Uh, the next thing that they talked about in depth was, um, they got rid of trophies, all the collectible trophies and stuff. Not there. They wanted to give people a reason to keep playing and going and collecting all the different stuff. 
Um, and they have what they, which I like the trophies. I, I, I do like the trophies too. Cool. Um, trying to collect them all is a big pain in the keister though. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they mentioned that like throughout the entire course of the, the smash series, anytime a character, you know, finishes off the final battle, uh, against, you know, the master hand, you realize that they're just a toy. And it's been in some kid's imagination the whole time, everything that's been going on. Mm-hmm. But so there's our real world and then there's the character's real world. And it's like, well, you know, n- we have all these crossover references and stuff. Like what happens to all the other characters that aren't fighters? And they introduce mm-hmm. what's called the spirit uh, or the spirits. So basically, like as you go through the game, you get to collect different spirits, and they do different things. And that's a whole system of stuff that, like, I'd I'd have to rewatch it and take notes to jot down. Like, oh, this is everything that it does. But basically, like you can increase your stats that way. You can, uh, if there's a stage that has, um, like one of Kirby's stages, there's the tree that like blows out a strong wind. You could have a spirit equipped to you that says, oh, I'm super resistant against strong winds and you're not pushed as far or as fast as some of the other characters. So it it adds a really nice customizable option to to players. Yeah, I I do wonder, like, when will that be in play? Like, obviously, in competitive modes... well, I mean, maybe you can, but, um, you know, I'm, it's I'm basically sure there'll be modifiers. Some, yeah, a lot of the big tournaments will just be like, nope, we're doing it straight, normal. This is what we got. Two stock, here's the time limit. Yeah. Um, whereas, like, there will probably be some one-off tournaments that will still do, like, the two stock time limit, but will allow you to use custom characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then that will really bring out like this is what's the best combo for this type of character and yada 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 and all that kind of stuff um yeah so that could be it it adds a new element to it uh yeah it gets pretty complex especially with the the um the sub spirits and the you know i mean like it yeah like you have your primary spirit and then you have support spirits and it's just yeah support spirits that's what yeah so many different things so many yeah yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot to a lot to get used to. I'm just ready to play Smash, man. I'm, I'm yeah. excited. One more month, man. <laughs> One more month. Yes. Uh, but yeah. So long. So like, and <clears throat> the way to collect spirits is there's different spirit battles that you go, and if you manage to defeat <clears throat> uh, the fighter, and then you have to hit them with a laser cannon. They have a spinning shield around, and if you manage to hit them with the laser cannon. Um, you get their primary spirit. If you fail and you hit the the spinning shield around them, um, they did say this like, don't worry if you end up missing and you hit the shield. Uh, whatever damage you do will stay the next time that spirit comes in or that spirit battle comes up. Uh, so <clears throat> you know, just take your aim and if you miss, don't worry about it. Next time you'll get them because like from what I saw from that one shot where they express or where they showed that off. Like it took off a chunk of that shield. Yeah. So. Which I remember, I remember, which I'm sure this will happen during this game. Whenever uh, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of when a new fighter approaches, you know, and you're, you're the, mm-hmm. one of the hidden characters or whatever. Yeah, I remember losing to captain Falcon the first time and being like, no, do I have to do all that again? Like, yeah. <laughs> I think that uh, happened in Melee with Mewtwo one time. I don't remember who I was playing as, but it was a character I was not very good with. And then I think it was Jigglypuff. I was playing as Jigglypuff, and then Mewtwo appeared, and I was like, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> it's like, I did not pick my best character for this. I didn't know this was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah. Oh, man. Uh. But yeah. So there's that. Uh, they also mentioned a bunch of multiplayer changes. Um, they're going to be... They're trying to do the best that they can on uh, making sure that there's stable connections constantly. Um, they did, however, 
make it very, very easy, easy for like someone like N64 Josh, who's probably going to stream this a bunch and have people who are like, they want to just spectate or they want to get in line to, to uh, get into the match. And pretty much what it is, is like you go into an arena room that someone sets mm-hmm. up and you have like the four players in the, in the center and they're the ones who are going to be duking it out. And then there's, you have your character token and you can move your character token to the stands if you want to spectate or there's a line leading up to the the boxing ring, pretty much. Uh, and that's how you wait your turn to be able to hop in and be able to do some of that stuff, which I thought was awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, it's almost like putting your coin on the arcade cabinet or something. Yeah, like the... <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, if, if, you know, if one of those spots was, uh, I'm just going to put my coin right over here on this seat so I can sit and watch. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Still, uh, like... Yeah, that's really cool. Um, cause, I mean, then you have, especially because they're going to have the chat system mm-hmm. set up. That's another thing we get to talk about is that it does connect to the Nintendo Switch Online app. Yes. Uh, which I'm excited to see what all that will entail, which they kind of went into it. I kind of zoned out a little bit during that part, but I'll, I'll discuss what I'd like to see from it in a little bit. But anyways... Um, you'll have the chat and so i mean you could literally have like casters in your in your um in your lobby in your uh arena mm-hmm. lobby and watching the game and casting which i mean that's you could have online tournaments that that are cast like all online everybody in different places and uh, mm-hmm. that, that's pretty cool um i'm definitely excited to see what a lot of streamers will do with that yeah I would imagine that this, which it could just be me Nintendo fanboying, but really like this is going to be a huge game. And I would imagine that there's going to be a lot of streamers playing this game when it comes out. Mm -hmm. Even, even ones that don't always play it, you know? (laughs) Um, (laughs) And like some of the other changes that they did with the multiplayer system is like, as you win battles, you'll get, um, global smash points which pretty much shows off like hey this is how good you know this is how much i win my matches and how well i do in a competitive scene and then like once you get up to a certain point you get to enter like uh like the elite multiplayer uh you know and that's where all the really good players are and the cool thing with that is when you get into that you get to create a pretty much a dog tag that's your smash tag as they call it um yeah yeah and, you know, whenever someone, you know, you play against someone, if you win, you get their smash tag, which you don't, you don't lose your smash tag. They pretty much just get a copy of your smash tag. Um, and then, you know, vice versa, if you lose, they get your smash tag and so on and so forth. And like they said that you can take those smash tags and you can turn them in for gold coins to be able to buy stuff in the store. Um, like, yeah, like spirits, uh, me outfits and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be super cool. If it's like keeping track of who all you've beat to, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, uh, which, and, and I, I'm sure it will like how many times you beat them and all that, but it looks like your smash tag is at least somewhat customizable. Yep. If as you play and unlock more customization for it, like that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they they didn't go a whole lot into a whole lot of detail on what the um what the customization options were, but it pretty much looked like here's my character, here's my color, and then maybe a small and, message at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So that that's what I'm saying. Like maybe like instead of just a color, you could get like you know a background of your favorite character or your favorite yeah. like stage or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, if like you said, you're unlocking gold or you're un- you can trade in the tags for gold. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can use that gold to buy customizations for your tags, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, uh, lots of replayability there for mm-hmm. sure. Not that there's any argument on whether or not this game is going to be replayable. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> speaking of replayability, they're bringing an adventure mode to it called, yes. uh, what is it? the world of light uh and it pretty much it's the explanation of what happens to all of these characters in their world where everybody's all spirits now yeah which that was an excellent cutscene. oh man and some parts of it were hilarious 
I the saw box. I saw a meme that someone made, and it was that cutscene because you start off adventure mode playing as Kirby, because uh, Kirby is the only one who managed to escape. Yeah, uh, yeah. I actually saw a. Um... Sorry, you go ahead. You uh, but it. it's a, it's a, it's that screenshot of Kirby looking out over the world, and it's the world of Smash Brothers, and it shows like you see come kind of like where the different stages are in the Smash world. But someone took that picture and then right above it put number one victory royale. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I saw I saw I just read the headline, but it was actually a IGN post that said why the Avengers need Kirby to defeat Thanos, like or something <laughs> like that. And I was like, that would probably be a fun read. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I just saw that scrolling past. I saw another picture. Someone made a new Smash Ultimate tier list. And for God tier, it's just Kirby. And then yeah. <laughs> there's just this giant, it's just like it goes God tier, trash, and it's just every other character, except for Piranha Plant, where that one's in green. It says literally a potted plant. And it's just Piranha Plant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the the inklings going in the in their ink to yeah. hide no, it's <laughs> just funny. like like i see them just like i was like what are they and then i see them hop in it's like that makes sense yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then it just takes out the ground like, yeah to get them and uh you just see the box sitting there and just uh-huh. which is snake you know of course like, like i saw the box and I'm just like oh, snake jeez yeah. come on man <laughs> nobody's here <laughs> uh That's, but yeah that was a and cool cut scene that I, was a cool cut scene in the and beginning the, fighting it some and yeah. yeah and then the trailer for world of light and like all the different things they can do which like yeah. he went and like right before they started it he went and said like you know we do have an adventure mode um that is going to be more focused on fighting rather than story like subspace emissary but like this one's got some story, and it's freaking huge. Yeah, I was like, it looks like a big, a big map to be like going around and stuff. Yeah, so, uh, yes. I think it'll be cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing they're what they mean is there's not going to be like the, the platformer side scrolling parts, maybe. Um, maybe which I but... thought was kind of neat when I yeah. like in the sub subspace emissary. So I kind of hope we do see some of it, but. That's kind of what I got from that. It was yeah. like, you know, you've got the overworld where you're moving around and stuff mm-hmm. and unlocking, like, you know, you hit the the exclamation point to unlock the red bricks and all that stuff. But, yeah. but you know, it doesn't look like there's going to be like the, like I said, the side scrolling and, platform. And there's definitely going to be, be a, a, a bunch of like different kind of, I don't want to say event fights, but like uh, they, they kind of showed it off a bit in, uh, in the, the spirit battles where, like, if you want to get the Lukita and Red Spiny uh, spirit, and from a lo- from the looks of it, World of Light is going to have a lot of these fights, too, where it's going to be mm-hmm. kind of themed. And the spirit battle to get the Lukita and Spiny is you fight Lemmy Koopa, who looks an awful lot like a Lukita in his clown car, and then you fight a bunch yeah. of tiny little red Bowsers that are supposed yeah, to be the red Spinies. The yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, it's... I, I love seeing the creative challenges that they do because that was a, that was something that they did in the uh, the Wii U one. Is like, oh, here's a theme for this challenge. You know, go ahead and try and do this. Uh, some yeah. of those challenges were bonkers, though. <sighs> and it's like, beat this oh. on at least hard difficulty. It was like, but there's only nor- easy, normal, and hard. This yeah. thing's near impossible on normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tried it on hard, and it was just like, nope, stomped immediately. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, oh, what was I going to say? It was about the... Oh, it, the, the, it looks like some of them will, will even have, like, different skins on characters that make them look like mm-hmm. other characters. I can't remember a specific one that I saw, but um, that will be cool. But, yeah, the just the fact that the the light i guess that that turned them into spirits is like making copies of them and their eyes are going to be red yeah that's pretty cool yeah i yeah so just that whole Evil adventure Mario. mode in general i am super excited for yeah for sure yeah that's gonna it's probably gonna be several several tens of hours at least of, mm-hmm. uh, of gameplay i'd imagine yeah uh but so that's pretty much everything that they went over in the 
in the Smash Direct. Like I said, we they went over a lot of stuff with like how the spirit system was going to work. We covered it very basically, just to kind of give our listeners a bit of an idea. But, uh, man, December 7th can't come soon enough. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. i be like, happy birthday, Mom. By the way, I'm just going to be at home in my corner playing on playing Smash. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what what day of the week is that? Because if it's a... Oh, let's see. It's a Friday, of course. So, yeah, no. Fiona will be in school. It's like, I'm, I'm just... I'm playing it while Fiona's in school so that that way I can not have to worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I will be playing it as soon as I get it. I'm sure I'll be playing it as soon as the kids get home i like i'm gonna i it's gonna be hard yeah um and i would like to try to get pretty good at it mm-hmm. like i've always been decent at smash um j- uh because i just because i used to play it a lot <laughs> um mm-hmm. but uh but yeah like i'm i'm excited to actually try to get good at it um not that i'm think i'm gonna be super competitive or anything but it'd be fun to actually stand a chance in maybe some uh some local tournaments at least yeah Uh, because and like for for me like i've again i'm kind of like in the same vein as you like i've been i'm okay at smash like i'm not great at it but like when i played melee a lot like i just had two other friends that i play with and it got to a point where like there were some characters they told me i couldn't i wasn't allowed to play as yeah yeah um and i was like fine i guess and then i would yeah, just take that I, I was a, with other characters i was a nasty fox player on melee which i know a lot but yeah I'd, I'd i'd have i'd take on all three of the friends that i would play with sometimes uh, like you know we'd have one versus three mm-hmm. and i could uh i could beat them sometimes i could i mean they'd get me sometimes but that would be one <laughs> yeah i chic Sheik was my was my number one in melee. Uh, in the in Zelda Sheik, yeah, Zelda Sheik. Well, I never played a Zelda. Like as soon as the fight started, it instantly just transformed. Changed the Sheik, and that's and it. then I found yeah. out that there was a there was a button command that you could push and hold during a fight or right before a fight started, and you started as Sheik. So oh, I learned really? how to do that, and then like I never played a Zelda. I I had tried playing a couple of times as like switching between the two, and it's just like. Yeah, this isn't just this isn't cutting it for me. Like I've got to play as Sheik. Um, Zelda's up B is awesome though. The, yeah, but uh, I had I had gotten to a point where like my buddies would knock me off and like Haha, you're not gonna make it and like I would time my jumps just right and then do my up B and like how did you even make it back? And I was like, that's my trade secret. Smash, you're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there there was a time where I was like, I really want to get good with Roy in melee. And I would set it up so that it was me against uh, three computers set at level nine. Mm-hmm. And that's when I realized that the AI in Melee is not very smart. Like, yeah. dumb. Like, you said it's a level nine, and it's like, is this the hardest one? I can't tell. Because they would just walk straight towards you, and it's just like, well, I'm just going to charge this and whap. Whap. <laughs> yeah. Whap. Okay, that's done. Uh... But yeah, so it that in the Wii U version that got much more difficult. Uh, they got super smart, um, <laughs> yeah. and it was nuts. But yeah, I am really looking forward to this. I cannot wait for this. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be my next big time sink, for sure. Uh, for sure. That, anything else you want to add before we start wrapping things up? Uh gonna be here. i'm gonna be in london mm-hmm. which so i guess we just won't record but yep. i'm looking for what i, I want to pick up a game before i go because we have an eight hour flight what but like probably just an indie game okay i was thinking mark of the ninja what do you think uh my buddy's been playing that and he's been having a lot of fun with it do you have celeste i don't i don't pick have up celeste. celeste celeste you think celeste is i i I've been watching my buddy play Mark of the Ninja and it's really cool. But like mm-hmm. Celeste is still way more fun. And the story is a lot better too. Yeah. So. All right. Note taken. Mm-hmm. Note taken. 
Uh, but yeah, so let's start wrapping things up. Draco, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Draco Augustus, or you can email me if you like at Draco at MuleHornGaming.com. And as always, you can find me everywhere as Scrap Gear. Uh, that's Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Well, no, not on Facebook. Sorry. Facebook is my name, which you'll never <laughs> know. Uh, but. Be sure to follow Nindies and Indies on Twitter at Nindies and Indies. Uh, that's Nindies twice because and was too long. Uh, and if you like listening to video game podcasts, be sure to check out the official video game podcast of MuleHornGaming.com, which is our home site, and you can catch all of our, you can catch out a bunch of nerdy stuff uh, on there. Uh, but the official video game podcast of MuleHornGaming.com, Analog Assault, where they talk whole bunch of video games all over the place uh, I think the big thing they've been talking about uh, has been Red Dead 2 and probably Black Ops 4? I know Mule's been playing it for a bit Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah so be sure to check them out uh, but that is going to do it for episode 25 of Nindies and Indies until next time, GG GG GG